Good morning, and welcome to our worship service online. Today I want to talk to you about wisdom's call. On New York, on New York Harbor, on Liberty Island, stands a large sculpture of a noble woman. This sculpture is known as the Statue of Liberty. The woman depicting, depicted by this statue never really lived. She stands as a symbol of a basic value that we hold dear in this country, the value of liberty. In a similar way, in the first chapter of Proverbs, Solomon introduces us to a noble woman named Wisdom. She is not a flesh and blood character. She stands as a symbol of a value that wise people are to hold dear, the value of God's wisdom. Let's read what Lady Wisdom had to say in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 to 33. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, and since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call on me, call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and will be at ease without fear of harm. Thank you, Lord, for this your word. And now as we look at it together, I pray that you will help us to understand it and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to, in, you to observe with me that there are three times the word call is used in our text. It's used in verse 20, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. Then it is also used in verse 24, but since you refuse to listen, when I call, and again it's used in verse 28, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. And these three uses of the word call give us a framework for studying this passage. The first thing I want you to notice with me is wisdom calls out. 
There are three characteristic of wisdom's call. First of all, it was a public call. Look at verses 20 and 21. This call was given out in the open. It was not in an office. It was not in a private boardroom. It was out in the open. It was in this public square. It was on top of the wall where everybody could see. And it was at the city gate. The city gate is a description of the political center of the city at that time. So this call from Lady Wisdom was a public call. You might also notice in verse 22, it was a plaintive call. It was a sad set of questions that Lady Wisdom asked. How long will the simple love your simple ways? By simple she means she, that we are uninformed, that we do not know God's wisdom. How long will you love being uninformed? How long will you love not knowing God's truth? Then she also asks, how long will mockers delight in mockery? Mockers make fun of God's wisdom. Mockers think that God's wisdom, since it is different than man's wisdom, is foolish. How long will you love your simple ways, she asks. How long will mockers delight in mockery? And then how long will fools hate knowledge? The knowledge of God is something that fools hate. And this is not intellectual fools. This is fools who are characterized by something that is morally deficient in their lives. So this is a sad set of questions that she asked. It was a public call, it was a plaintive call, but look at verse 23, it was also a promising call. There was a need for change. Lady Wisdom says, repent at my rebuke. This word repentance means a change of one's mind in such a way that it results in a change of behavior. Lady Wisdom is calling out to people who have ignored her, to people who have made fun of her, to people who simply will not accept her. And she's saying, please change your mind. Please don't go on this uh, deadly road that you have chosen to go on. There was a need for a change. And then there is a promise made. If this change takes place, if you repent, if you change your mind at my rebuke, then, she says, I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my teachings known to you. Lady Wisdom wants to be available to all who will listen, to all who will respond in obedience, to all who will eagerly seek God's ways and not their own ways. But alas, we, we reject this call from Lady Wisdom. We don't want God's wisdom. We're happy to do it our own way. The second thing I observe is that wisdom explained the consequences of this refusal. Look at verse 24 and verse 25. The response of the simple is recalled. It says, but since you did this, I will in turn do this. Verse 24 and 25, since you refuse to listen when I call. Have you ever called out to your children and they had a, had a way of just ignoring you? They were having so much fun playing their game they were f having so much fun on their phone that they didn't want to pay attention to you. They didn't want to come to eat. They didn't want to go to bed. Whatever it was, they ignored you calling. Well, that's how God feels. That's how Lady Wisdom feels. She's calling out to you, 
but you're ignoring her. And then she says, since you refuse to listen when I call, no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand. I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to have you listen to me, but you won't listen. The second statement is, since you disregard my advice, I give you advice in how to live in a godly way, but it doesn't matter to you. You're not going to listen anyway. You did not accept my rebuke. And this rebuke has been mentioned before. In verse 23, the Lady Wisdom calls out, Repent, change your mind at my rebuke. But now she says, You didn't listen to my rebuke. You had no interest. And the response of Lady Wisdom is promised. In turn, I will do this. I will laugh when disaster strikes you. God is the one who created us. God is the one who knows how we are made. God is the one who knows how to help us through difficult times in our world, like this pandemic, like uh, storms and difficulties all around the world. He is the creator. He knows how to handle these situations. But since we refuse to listen to God's wisdom, God has a response. And he will say, okay, ha ha ha, do it your way. I will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity takes over you. When calamity takes over you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then all of a sudden you want God's wisdom. Then all of a sudden you want to hear from God. And God says, but you didn't want to listen to me in the first place. When I called to you in good times, you rejected me. And now you return to me just in bad times? Forget it. So wisdom explained the consequences of refusal. And then wisdom predicted the future, verses 28 to 33. Then, when calamity overtakes them, wisdom makes a few predictions. The first prediction is found in verse 28. They will call to me, but I will not answer. What a sad thing. Wisdom has been calling consistently, urgently, and we've ignored God's wisdom. Now we get in trouble, and all of a sudden we think we're going to call on God. But we've ignored his wisdom, and because we've ignored him, it says here, we will call, and he will not answer. They will look for me, but not find me. Wisdom is going to be elusive during the times of disaster, because when things are going well, we ignore God's wisdom. We can't love God only in the hard times and forget about him in the good times. He wants us to live with him all the time. He wants us to love him and obey him all the time. Why is wisdom not going to answer? Why are you not going to be able to find wisdom? Look at wisdom's rationale in verse 29 and 30. It says, since they hate knowledge and they did not choose to fear the Lord, Remember what we learned the other, the other Sunday? It said that the fear, in verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. To have an awe of God, to respect God and His word and His will and His way is the beginning of knowledge. But wisdom says they hated knowledge and they did not choose to fear the Lord. You have a choice. You can fear the Lord or you can ignore him. 
But if you choose to ignore him, this is the penalty that will happen to you. When difficult times come your way, you will not have anyone to turn to. Since they hated me, or hated knowledge, and did not choose to fear the Lord, says wisdom, since they would not accept my advice, but spurned my rebuke, and her rebuke is spoken of in verse 23 and verse 25. And her rebuke was spurned. Her rebuke was to call people to repentance, to change their mind, to listen to God's wisdom. But they would not accept. We would not accept the rebuke. And then there's a second, second prediction that's given in verse 31. They will eat the fruit of their ways. In other words, you've chosen a path, now live in it. You've chosen a, some, a, a, a way to live, now, now you're stuck with it. They, have, they will eat the fruit of their ways. They will be filled with the fruit of their schemes. If you choose to ignore God's wisdom, that's going to mean a difficult life for you. Wisdom's rationale, the waywardness of the simple, will kill them. This is a life and death situation. Either we listen to wisdom's call, either we listen to what God wants to say to us through his wisdom, or we will suffer loss. Then wisdom makes a third prediction in verse 33. And it's a much more positive prediction. Up till now, the first predict two predictions have been very negative. But look at verse 33. Whoever listens, if when wisdom calls out, and it's a public call to, to draw people towards God's wisdom, to draw people to listen to God's word, Whoever listens to me will live in safety, will be at ease, and will live without fear of harm. This is not a promise that nothing bad will ever happen to a Christian, but this is a general principle that says that if you listen to God's wisdom, your life will go well. If you ignore God's wisdom, your life will not go well because you're leaving God out of it. Don't leave God out of your life. Don't leave God's wisdom out of your life. Don't ignore God's wisdom when she calls. God's wisdom is calling out. Will you listen? If you listen, God promises you safety. God promises you blessing. God promises you to take care of fear in your life, to, to calm your fears, and to protect you from harm. But if you don't listen, the day will come when you want God to help you, and God will not listen because you didn't listen to him. See, this is a relationship that we need to have with God. It's not something that God is a cosmic bellhop in the sky and that whenever we throw a quarter at him, he has to fix our problem. No. It's a relationship when we hear God's calling, call on our lives, when we hear Lady Wisdom speak to us about what God wants us to do and how God wants us to fear Him and how God wants us to live, and we respond in obedience, life goes well. But if we hear God calling and Lady Wisdom is challenging us to listen to God and we mock Him and we ignore Him, and we pay no attention 
to God and his ways, then we, when we're desperate, God will say, you've chosen your lifestyle. Live in it. That's a serious st statement. And it's a serious consideration that we all have to make. Are we going to choose how to respond to Lady Wisdom's call? To God's wisdom? Will we mock it? Or will we respond to it in obedience? My prayer is that you and I will respond in obedience and say, I want to make God's will my primary concern in the good times so that I can rely on him to take me through the tough times of life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this, your word. And I pray that you will help us to understand it, to appreciate it, to hear your call and not to ignore it, but to respond to it in obedience. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that you will bless each one who is listening to this uh, presentation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.